Glory be to God. He is good and His mercy endures forever and ever and ever. And Father, we do praise and magnify You and thank You, Lord, for this day. Thank You, Father, for what You have planned for us in this service. And Lord, we thank You, Lord, that You sent the mighty Spirit of God, Lord, into our, not into our hearts, but not only into our hearts, but Lord, in this place this morning. Lord, we thank You, Father, that whatever need is uh, the people need, Father, we know, Father, that You are the need meter. And so, Lord, we thank you for meeting the needs of the people this morning. But, Father, we pray for a glimpse of heaven. Lord, we pray, Lord, show us your glory this morning, Father. And so, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for it. Believe that the anointing today will destroy yokes and remove burdens. For it's in Jesus Christ's wonderful name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. We'll give the Lord one more shout. Amen. And you can be seated. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Uh, last Sunday, you know, God really began to move. We ministered to people, Brother Michael. Uh, you know, we received them and had him sit down. You know, they're going to Costa Rica. And there was $1,700 in that offering. Praise God. So praise God. So thank you all. I know Michael and Phyllis appreciates that. They're ministering today in another church, so they'd be here. But uh, praise God. God is good, isn't he? Pastor, you, we, we received that offering Sunday. Uh, I just had a little bit with me in my, in my wallet. It might have been 10 or $15. And uh, I gave it. I'd like to give more, but that's all I had. Yeah. Well, the next, the next Thursday, a guy called me. I, I'm going on a mission trip to Guatemala in May. And I, had to, I was like, Lord, you're going to have to pay for this because my, my savings isn't what I, what yeah, I want to be I right know. now. I said, Lord, I need you to. I said, Lord, I believe you're going to pay for it. Well, Thursday, a guy called me. He said, Sunday, which would have been the same Sunday we were given here, your trip was paid for. <laughs> the, whole the whole thing. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The, the Spirit of God has no boundaries, does it? Amen. Amen. No time. Praise God. He's here and there, wherever it's needed to be. Glory to God. God is so good. Hallelujah. Boy, I love you guys. This is a great church. Amen. Awesome shirt. Praise the Lord. Well, give the Lord a shout if you're going to clap. Praise the Lord. Clap. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we're going to get into the Word. and uh, I believe we've got a Word for you this morning. Glory to God. So let's pray one more time, okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you, magnify you. Father, I pray, Father, that the anointing that you have placed upon my life, Father, Lord, would be visible and tangible today. We pray, Father, that signs and wonders would follow the preaching of the gospel. Lord, you said if we would preach the gospel, signs and wonders would follow. And Lord, you, we see in the Word of God that even the apostles prayed, Lord, stretch forth your hand to heal and grant signs and wonders to be done by the name of the Holy Child Jesus. And so, Lord, if the apostles can pray that way, Lord, we know that we can pray that way as well. And Lord, we know that it's your will because you said you would Go with us always, Lord, confirming the word with signs following. So, Lord, we just believe, Father, that you'll put your approval, not upon a man, not upon a church, but, Lord, upon your word. Lord, you'll put your approval upon your word this morning, Father. And, Lord, you'll open the eyes of the blind. Lord, you'll open the ears of the deaf. Father, that you'll, you'll magnify yourself, Father, in this place this morning. And, Father, we thank you for it and believe that it's done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you know, as I was meditating and praying about what to minister this morning, you know, I, like I said when we received the offering and this morning did the announcements, I know without a shadow of doubt it's God's will for you to be healed. I know that. I know that there's no doubt in my mind that healing is as real today as it was 2,000 years ago because the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And a lot of times, you know, when people are getting older and they get older and you know, and uh, people think, well, that's just part of old age is getting sick and dying. But saints of God, the Bible says in Psalm 91 and verse 16, with long life will I satisfy you. And I believe that's uh, talking to the child of God there, that you can live as long as you desire. Amen. As long as you desire. I, I believe that. And people say, well, I'm going to live to be 120. Well, I've never met anybody to live to be 120 because I believe your desire to go to heaven approaches you quicker than that. Amen? But if you can desire that, if you can believe that, desire to 120, then have at it. But I just don't know anybody 
that's done that. Even the strongest people I know, they get a glimpse of heaven and they want out of here. Amen. They don't want to be around here. Amen. Now, we can't stop old age from happening, but we can slow it down, can't we? Amen. Now, just think about Abraham and Sarah. Amen. She had a baby when she was, what, 90 years old? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, so, you know, and the king, uh, was it the, uh, the, the king of uh, Abimelech or something, uh, wanted, uh, wanted Sarah as his wife? I mean, she was an old woman. Amen. So, so I believe that, that, that God can slow down the process, the aging process. You know, y'all would never believe that I was 95 years old. Amen. <laughs> but God can slow down that, that aging process. I know that. And uh, He can slow it down, and you can live healthy all the days of your life. I believe that. that I believe that's the will of God. I've, I know it's the will of God. I, I know it's the will of God. And people say, well, brother, how are we going to die if we never get sick? You don't have to be sick to die. You know, and I tell people, you know, maybe they, there's something wrong with them and the doctor's given them a death sentence. And, I, you know, I'll tell them, I said, well, let's go ahead. You know, they said, well, I, I, you know, I just want to go home. I said, well, wait a minute. Before you go home, let's get you healed first. Now, you know, don't go home in a sick body. Let's get you healed. Give God a good report. Amen. Your, your healing will do more for God than your death will. Amen. And so let's get you healed. Let's get you all patched up. And then after you get well, if you want to go home, then just go home. If you want to get well, I mean, if you want to, to, to die after you get well, then go home in a healthy body. But see, I found out most people, amen, when they get healed, they don't want to die then. Amen, they, they, they don't want to go. But you, I believe that, and I believe the Word of God, you can live to you satisfied in a healthy body. Amen, everybody say a healthy body. A, a healthy body. Amen, the, you know, the, the message of healing is just not for young people. Amen, that's for everybody. Amen. And so you can live a healthy life in this earth. I believe that. I believe that. I, I, well, I know that. I know that. And I also believe uh, that it's God's will for you to prosper in this life. Amen. Let them shout for joy. Psalms 35, verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually. How often is continually? That's all the time. The Lord has pleasure in my prosperity. I mean, the Bible says we need to be saying that all the time. Amen, that the Lord has pleasure in my prosperity. I know that it's God's will that I prosper. The Bible says there in 3 John verse 2, Beloved, I wish, that word wish in the King James Version is translated prayer in, in, you know, uh, everywhere else. Amen, it's the same word. So he says that. He says, I pray above everything else that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So he's telling us right there, Beloved, I'm praying, and this is the man of God that says, this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And because we know that he hears us, we also know that we have the petition that we desire of him. So he said, he said, I'm praying above everything else that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Your soul made up of your mind, will, and emotions. So as your mind, will, and emotions prosper, you're going to prosper financially. You'll prosper financially. And so I know that. I believe that. You know, and I know that, you know, when I first uh, got saved, you know, I, I got saved in a church that didn't believe a whole lot of anything except when you die, you go to heaven. And thank God for that. If that's the only information I had, then praise God, I'm going to heaven. I don't have to go to hell. Thank God I don't have to go to hell. Amen. Amen. That, that's a wonderful message. And that's all that, all that that church preached basically was you don't have to go to hell. And so that's a great message. I love that message. Amen. Aren't you glad of that message? Amen. And we don't have to go to hell. Turn your neighbor and say, I'm so glad we don't have to go to hell. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, uh, but that's all I knew. But then I begin to hear the Word of God. And I begin to share the Word of God. That it's God's will to heal you. And it's God's will to prosper you. You know, and there'll be people getting mad at that. They'll get mad because you'd say that God wants us healed. Or God wants us to prosper. And they'd get mad at you for saying that? Well, honey, when I was broke, that was a message I needed to hear. People say, well, that, that puts people under condemnation. If they're broke and if they're sick, that, that makes them feel bad because you're saying God wants them to prosper. Honey, I'm trying to get you out of that situation. I, I'm, I'm saying these things because I love you and because God loves you. You know, the Bible said God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Amen. God is a giver. He loves you so much that He gave. Well, it didn't stop at the cross. He keeps on giving. Amen. He keeps on giving. He keeps on pouring it out. So, so I know. 
that without a shadow of a doubt, it's God's will for me to prosper. So when I was broke and didn't have anything, and I heard somebody say God wanted me to prosper, my ears perked up, amen, and I, got, I started listening. Move on, over on the edge of the seat because that's what I needed to hear. I needed to hear somebody preach and teach that God wants you to prosper. I needed someone to uh, tell me that God wanted me healed. I wanted to see that in the Word of God. And I began to see it in the Word of God. And I know that it's God's will for me to be healed. So, beloved, I, I wish or I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Amen. Amen. Your soul made up of your mind, will, and emotions. So as your mind, will, and emotions prosper, you will prosper. Amen. The Bible says, you know, my people are destroyed. Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And so what you don't know will hurt you, don't will want it. What you don't know will destroy you. If you don't know that it's God's will to prosper you, you'll never prosper like God wants you to. If you never know that it's God's will to heal you, you'll never use your faith for your healing. Because you think, well, maybe this is God teaching me a lesson or something. Maybe God wants me sick. Maybe there's a reason for me to be sick. You know, and, and they always bring up, bring up something, you know, like Grandma, she was a godly woman and, and she died of cancer. Well, thank God she's in heaven. Amen, but cancer's not the will of God. Amen, God didn't come up with cancer. Amen, God hates it as much as you do. And, uh, and, and we ought to fight, that's why we fight it. And if you believe God gave it to you, why go to the doctor? Stay at home. Save your money. Amen, because if it's God's will for you to die of cancer, no matter how much money you spend, you're going to die. Amen, see what I'm saying? So it's not God's will that any, any of you perish. Amen. Not, see, it's not God's will that anybody go to hell. Amen. But people go to hell, don't they, all the time. It's not God's will for them to go to hell. Uh, because the Bible says that. It's not God's will that any perish, but all come to repentance. Amen. And see, and, and people say, they always, you know, throw it off on God. You know, they'll, they'll always say, well, you know, if it's the will of God, and they'll attack that on their prayer, if it's the will of God. That's why He's given us His will. We know His will. And, uh, and so people say, well, it, it must be the will of God or it wouldn't be happening. But you remember the story about uh, Israel wanting a king? You know, they were ruled by uh, judges. The, they, they were ruled, you know, Samuel. He was, he was a judge. And, and they, they, uh, they, uh, uh, the country was ruled by men of God. But they wanted a king. They said, give us a king. They told Samuel, give us a king just like everybody else, like every other country, every other nation has, give us a king. And God says, oh, I'll give you a king because you want one, but it's going to be rough on you. It's going to be rough. He's going to oppress you, and they're going to tax you and do all these things. It's going to be rough, but you want a king, I'll give you a king. And so God gave him a king. Well, was that God's will for them to have a king? No, it wasn't God's will. But he gave them what they wanted. Amen. They wanted a king. They said, God, we don't want you ruling us anymore. We don't want the men of God telling us what to do anymore. We want a king. And they got a king. Amen. And as a result of that, you know, well, you know the results. Amen. It did happen just like God said it would happen. Amen. Because, see, just because it happens, that doesn't mean it's the will of God. That doesn't mean it's the will of God just because things happen. Uh, it is God's will for us to prosper, and it's God's will for us to be in health. And I know that. Right. Amen. But, so, but there's conditions to every promise. I want you to go with me to, to the book of John, chapter 5. And I think I read this last week. I'm not sure. But I've, I've been preaching and teaching out of this for the last three or four weeks. And, man, it just keeps getting stronger and stronger, the revelation. But in, in uh, John, chapter 5, and let's uh, read the story there. John chapter 5. I know I've got a John in my Bible. Amen. John chapter 5. And I'm going to start reading with verse 1, okay? John chapter 5 and verse 1. It says, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And there he is at Jerusalem, by the way, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water, for an angel went down at a certain season in, into the pool and troubled the water. Uh, whosoever then, first after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. 
And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. So 38 years this man had been uh, sick and infirm, is impotent in his feet. In verse 6, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had now been, he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man uh, when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him, Now this is important, listen to this. The Jews said unto him, uh, uh, Said unto him that was cured, uh, is this, uh, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Uh, then answered they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple, and saith unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto, unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews and it was, that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore, verse 16, and therefore, everybody underline the word therefore. Uh, and therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. My boy, there's so much information here. So much information in, in the word here. Now, now look at this. This man had been infirm for 38 years and he got healed. And, uh, you know, and the Jews asked him, you know, who told you to carry your bed? He said, I don't know who it was. He, all I know is he healed me. But anyway, Jesus finds him in the temple, and he finds out it's Jesus. So he turns around and goes tells the Jews that it was Jesus that did that. Now, uh, so look here. But Jesus told this man, after he found him in the temple, after he got healed, he said, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon thee. And see, and that's important. You need to underline that in your Bible. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. Amen. So, so he lets us know that sin opens the door for the blessings of, for the blessings of, or it opens the door uh, for the, the curses of, of, the, of the law and curses of everything else to come upon us. Uh, when those doors are closed, see, sin closes the doors for the blessings of God. Sin will close the doors. So it doesn't matter. God does want us to prosper. God wants us to live a life of health. But he said, sin no more, at least something worse come upon you. Now, we live in a society today that everybody you talk to is a Christian. You know, in, our, in Alabama anyway, in Decatur, Alabama, everybody's a Christian. And uh, you could go witnessing, and we do all the time. Everybody's got a church. And they say, well, where do you go to church? Oh, let me see. I go over here. I said, now, what's that pastor's name? Well, let me see. Uh, I, I, I don't remember right now, amen? My name's John, by the way. If somebody asks you, what's your pastor's name? Just say John. Hey, Amen. <laughs> so those people, you, you know immediately they don't go to church because they don't even know who the pastor is. But everybody's saved. They say they're saved. Every, everybody says they're saved. In Alabama they do, basically. 90% of us do anyway. Amen. But, but what they want, they want the blessings of God, amen, without the responsibilities of, of living a godly life. Come on, don't, don't shout me down just because I'm preaching good. They, they want the blessings without the consequences, amen, or if you don't. So he said, sin no more, lest something worse come upon you. That lets me know that even though this man was healed, our sin will open the door for more stuff to come back in. I mean, you, you know, and uh, minister to, uh, to, uh, to some people recently, not too long ago, that, that it was in an adulterous affair. And, uh, you know, and, I, and they came for counseling. And, uh, you know, and, and the thing was that the one that committed the affair didn't want out of that relationship. You know, did, didn't want to repent, didn't want to change anything, didn't want out of that relationship. And, and there was no reason really for this, uh, you know, for divorce. There was no except the adultery on one of them's part. And, uh, and so... But they didn't, they didn't want out of that relationship. They wanted out of their marriage, you know, for this other person. You know, but, but so they, they did their own thing. You know, I, I cautioned them and warned them and prayed with them, but it didn't do any good in one ear, out the other. Amen. People are going to do what they want to do. Amen. 
And so, so but, but the bad part is, you know, that, that the one that committed the adultery acted like, you can't put any condemnation on me. Amen. I, God loves me. Love, God loves me just like I am. Yeah, He'll love you all the way to hell too. Amen. And then, you know, and, and they were saying, you know, God loves me and you're not going to put any condemnation on me. I mean, the Bible says there, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, there's therefore no, now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk, listen, listen, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Right. Amen. There's a difference there in there. Yeah. Amen. It, it, there's no condemnation to those that are walking in the Spirit. You're not going to walk in the Spirit and commit adultery. Right. Amen. I, I know this is maybe a little deep for some, but... Uh, right. Amen. But, uh, but, but sin no more... At least something worse come upon you. I know that my sin will affect my finances. My sin will affect my, my physical body. Amen. It, it will affect me. If it's a real junk, and then people will start examining their self. Good. That's what I'm wanting you to do. Examine yourself. If there's any sin, repent. Repent. It's that easy. Repent. If you'll ask God to forgive you, He'll forgive you. But you can't say, Lord, I'm sorry, uh, and then do the same thing again tomorrow. That's not repentance. Repentance doesn't say, Lord, forgive me, and I thank you that there's now no condemnation on me. Amen. Thank you for that, Lord. And then go ahead and come live, continue to live that lifestyle. When I got saved, I, and I guess maybe I'm different, but when I got saved, things changed in my life. Things changed. You know, when I got saved, I had a fifth of Jack Daniels at home. I got saved on a Sunday. I went home that Sunday afternoon. Guess what I did with the Jack Daniels? I poured it down the drain. Well, yeah, that, that's expensive whiskey. You could have given it to somebody. That, there's, Christians think that way. No, I didn't want them to have it either. I poured it down the drain. Amen. I, I got rid of the stuff that I knew wasn't pleasing to God. I got rid of that stuff. Nobody had to tell me that. I just knew in my heart. I knew in my heart I needed to change some things in my life. And I did begin to change some things. And as a result, I lost some friends. You know, and people say, well, I, you know, my friends are friends. Well, they'll be your friend, you know, uh, as long as you do what you want them to do, they want you to do. I lost some friends over that. But that's all right. Amen. Jesus is my friend. <laughs> He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Praise the Lord. I didn't lose him. Amen. But I, look at all the friends I have gained. I lost some, sure. But I've gained a whole lot more. Hallelujah. I, I, there's no friend on this earth that I have or ever have had worth going to hell for. Amen. I, 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 there's not a friend on the earth, amen, or, nor a relative that I'd go to hell for. No? Praise God. But so, so people say, you're not going to put me under condemnation. The problem is, there's a difference in condemnation and conviction. Yeah. Amen. Condemnation. No, there's no condemnation, you know, uh, on us. And, you know, I, 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 I don't, I'm not condemning anybody, but I'm trying to convince you. There's a convicting. There's a convicting. So if, if we can convi convince you, conviction also means convincing. So, uh, so if we convince you, you know, that this is the way, the truth, and the life, Amen. Then it's easy to overcome certain things. It's easy to overcome. It's easy to overcome sin. People say, "Well, you know, brother John, I have a show." Remember when you got saved? How before you got saved? You know, I went to a denominational church and we we said it, you know, pews and and uh, that we'd all stand up and they'd sing, "Just as I am," about four or five times. Amen. And uh, and you know, and my hands would be on the back of the pew. Like that, and you know, my knuckles would begin to turn white, amen, because I was under conviction. I wasn't under condemnation, I was under conviction. The, the, the conviction for convicting power of God. And you'd go and say, Phew, God made it through that one. I, I don't want to do this anymore. And that's why a lot of people don't go to church is because they don't like that feeling of being convicted. I mean, that's not fun, is it? But I remember after I got saved, I went to church, and where'd it go? Where, where did the conviction go? I didn't have it anymore. Amen. I was free from that. 
praise God, it, it felt good that I could stand in the, in the presence of God and not feel guilty. Amen. I could stand before the Almighty God and know that all my sins were washed away. I wasn't, wasn't trying to hide anything, cover up anything. But I'm free. Amen. And I, I go where I love church. Amen. You know, people that love church, they're free from condemnation. Amen. Because they've been set free. People that don't like church, they're still dealing with that. Man, every time I go to that church, I get under conviction. I, I, I feel condemned when I go to that church. Amen? Good. Amen? That's what we're praying for. That you will feel convicted. Not condemned, but convicted. Amen? There's a difference in conviction and condemnation. Amen? There's no condo bundo in our preaching. Amen? Condemnation and bondage. Amen? That's what condo bundo means. Amen? That's a little phrase I heard somebody say. But there's no condemnation and there's no bondage in the Word of God, but there is conviction. And He will convict us. And the Bible tells us that over in John chapter 16. When the Spirit has come, He will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Amen. Amen. So, so He will convict us of our sin. You know, and, and it's imperative that we be convicted of our sin. You know, it'd be dangerous. It's dangerous for us if, uh, if we lived a life of sin and, didn't, and we lived this life of sin and didn't uh, feel convicted. If, if we lived this life of sin and didn't feel... That's dangerous. That's dangerous to you. And he said, sin no more, at least something worse come upon you. I want to be healed when I get sick. Or, bless God, uh, when sickness is trying to overtake me. I believe I have been healed. Amen? So, so I don't want sin to separate me from the goodness of God. And I, that's the first place I always look. If I pray and don't get results, I look to myself. Lord, is there any sin in my life that I've overlooked, that I've hid? Show, reveal that to me. Now, the devil, he'll always find something, uh, you know. But if it's something you've already repented for 10 years ago, I say, devil, get out of my face. Amen. But he might bring up something. And so, uh, you, know, you know, when uh, when the Lord uh, tells you, Amen. If, if there's something there, the Lord will tell you and you'll know it. You'll know it. And then you need to do what He says. And then He'll tell you the same thing He told, told this person, sin no more, at least there's something worse come upon you. Amen. Now, now so that means that my, my sin will open the door for worse things. You say, well, Brother John, how could it get any worse? I'm, I'm broke now and I'm bankrupt. How could it get any worse? Amen. Well, it could. Don't ask me how. I don't know how, but it could. Amen. Sin no more, at least something worse come upon you. You know, uh, sin is something, you know, you don't, we don't like to talk about that much because, you know, we, we like to preach the bubble gum and candy sermons. Amen. That God loves you. God loves me. We're all God's children. We're all going to heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. But that's, that, everybody's not going to heaven. Everybody that dies will not go to heaven. I've done enough funerals. You know, in my life, in 40 years of ministry, you think, uh, you know, all the funerals that I've done, uh, there's been some of them I knew didn't go to heaven. But thank God I'm not the judge. They're in the, hands of a, they're in the hands of a just God. That's up to them. But I wouldn't want to take that chance. I wouldn't want to take that chance. Listen, I love the life that we live. I love this message of faith that we preach. Amen. I love the fact that we can walk in health. I love the fact that I can prosper. Yeah. Amen. And Brother John is prospering. Amen. And say it's going to get better and better and better. Amen. And people might have a hard time with that. But go ahead. Listen, I've been poor, and it ain't fun. Amen. And, and I've had plenty, and listen, plenty is a whole lot more fun than being poor. Amen. And so if you get mad at the preacher, amen, for prospering, then I don't know what's going to happen to you. Because I'm telling you, if I don't prosper, you ain't going to prosper because you're listening to my preaching all the time. Amen. I, I, if I, you know, and you see that people preach their circumstances. You know, uh, you know, they preach sickness because they're sick. Well, it's God's will for us to be sick because they're sick. And they, and they prayed nothing happened. So it must be God's will for all to be sick. So they'll preach that to the congregation. Amen. Well, it, it don't, you know, I'm not the one, I'm not the judge. I mean, or I'm not the example. I'm not, I'm not the example. You don't, 
Uh, you don't judge your life by me, whether it works for me or not. Amen? Is it in the Word of God? What does God's Word say about this? So the Bible says, told, told the man, sin no more, least something worse come upon you. See, there is a difference in condemnation and con- conviction. Go with me to Hebrews chapter, chapter, uh, chapter 12 of Hebrews. And let me share from the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 12. Oh, hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12. And let's begin reading with verse 5. For you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. See, if God told us only good things all the time and didn't rebuke us and convict us of our sin, he wouldn't be much of a father. In in verse 6, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Now the King James Version says the word chasten there. But that word means correction. And you look it up and it will define that word as correction. So I'm going to read it correction and it's not going to change the meaning but it'll help you understand it a little bit better. So in verse 6 it says, For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. You know, and whips every son whom he, re- whom he receives. So he, he corrects and He will punish you. Amen. He will whip you. But if you endure correction, God dealeth with you uh, as with sons. For what son is he whom the, fa- whom the Father corrects not? But if you, be without, if you be without correction, wherefore all are partakers, then you are bastards or illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our, of our flesh which corrected us, he, he used the word correct there in the King James Version. He didn't say ch- chastened us there. So th- the Bible interprets itself. Which corrected us, uh, and, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Amen. So can you see? So he says that who he loves, he's going to correct. Amen. And has, how many has ever had a whipping from God besides me? I've had a whipping. He has taken me to the woodshed before. I mean, he didn't break my leg. You know, he didn't, he didn't uh, tear off a switch and whip me. Amen, with a switch. But he took me to the word, woodshed, amen, with a convicting power of God. And he corrected me. You know, and I thought I'd overcome some things. I thought, but, but, but whom the Lord loves, he's going to correct. That's why... You know, our kids, we have, to, we have to correct them. And if we don't correct them, they, they're gonna, they, you know, they grow up to be hellacious kids if we didn't correct them. The other day, we, the one pretty day last week, Friday I guess it was, we were out at, at the kids, uh, Brooke's boys were over to the house. And she's got a four-year-old and a seven-year-old. And uh, I looked out the window. I, I was in the kitchen and our, we got, got a... Uh, it goes out on the deck, double doors that go out on the deck. And I, I looked through the doors there, and there was uh, John Collin and Aiden. They were out there by the pool, by the swim pool, and they were throwing sticks in my swimming pool. And so, uh, so I yelled at them, and, I, you know, and they both had sticks at that time, about to throw another one in. And I yelled at them and told them not to do that. And I did it in a very authoritative way. <laughs> Amen. And so... Uh, so Aiden, he threw his stick down. But John Collin, he looked at the four-year-old. He looked at me and went, <laughs> And that really, I got some righteous indignation when I saw that. <laughs> so I was ready to tear his rear end up. And I went out there, and got him by the arm, and, and uh, you know, began to exhort him a little bit. And he looked at me and he said, Mercy, Papa. <laughs> Mercy. Well, where did he learn that? He learned that at church somewhere. I don't know. You can't whip a child when he does that. I, there's no way I could have whipped him. And uh, I said, son, I'll give you mercy this time. But if you ever do that again, I'm going to wear your britches out. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but he got out of that. Then that's the same way with Father God. God loves us. Amen. And so we 
stand before him about to get a weeping from the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So uh, thank God for the mercy of God. Thank God for His grace. And so whom the Lord loves, He will correct. You know, I, I love my grandsons, but I'm, I'll correct them if they need correcting. And they need correcting. Amen. And so, uh, and I'll, I'll correct them. They need to be corrected. And so we, it's because we love them. Because we love them, we will correct them. You know, the Bible tells us over, over in 2 Timothy, if, if you will. Go with me over there to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Chapter 3 of, of uh, 2 Timothy. And uh, look at verse 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So he, he says here that the Word of God is profitable for correction. And that's how God corrects you, is through His Word. And if you've got sin in your life, and you can sit through one of my sermons and not be convicted, then I'm not doing my job. If you've if you got sin in your life, and you can come to this church and be comfortable in church with the sin that's in your life, then I'm not doing my job. I'm not doing my job. I've, I failed somewhere. Because the Word of God will correct you. Amen. And in our society today, everything goes. You know, we're, we're, we're a homophobic if we preach against homosexuality. Honey, we're, we love you, and we're just trying to save your life. Sin no more. That sin, homosexuality is a sin, just like stealing is a sin. But we had to overcome stealing, didn't we? We, we, had, to, we had to overcome that. We had to overcome that we had to resist the urge to steal, just like you have to resist the urge to commit homosexuality. You, have, you, have, you, know, you know, and you may be here this morning, and listen to me, I might lose some people over this. It ain't my people anyway. If you're living with somebody out of wedlock, that is sin. Amen. I know everybody accepts it nowadays. It's, it's, a, it's, given, you know, it's smeared all over the TV that it's okay to live with somebody. But if you're living with somebody and you're not married, you're in sin. Amen. And you can't claim the promises of God as long as that sin is in your life. You cannot claim the promise of healing and prosperity with sin in your life. The first thing you've got to do is get rid of the sin. Lord, I repent. I'm sorry. Help me to overcome it. And He'll, like I said so many times, He'll forgive you on credit. He'll take your word for it. Amen. And so He takes your word for it. You go live your life. Then you believe God for the healing, for the prosperity, whatever it is you need. But when I'm dead and gone, I like for people to say, well, you know, that was a holy man of God. That, that, that man walked a holy life. That's what I would love to, for them to say at my funeral. You know, I wouldn't want them to say, but that was the biggest hypocrite you ever saw. He'd preach one thing and live another thing. Amen. I don't want that to be said of me. Amen. The Word of God will correct us. Amen. And if it's not correcting us, we're not hearing the Word of God. And we can say no to God so many times. It's like this. You know, Jesus told his disciples, harden not your hearts. So how do we, become, how do we get a hard heart? We're not, he's not talking about a blood pump, but he's talking about your spirit, man. The heart of man is the spirit. You know, like the heart of a tree, the heart of a watermelon. I mean, the heart of man, the heart of man is a, is a spirit. And so he said, harden not your heart. So, so people can harden their heart. How do, you hard, how do we get a hard heart? When God talks to us, when He convicts us of something and we keep on doing it or we fail to listen to Him, there's been times that God spoke to me and I go, no, 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 I don't want to hear that, I don't want to hear that, I don't want to hear that. Amen, I'm telling you. When God would say, I want you to preach, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear that. I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to hear God when He called me to preach. Amen. I didn't, want, I didn't want to hear God when He said, go in debt and build this church. Thank God it's paid for. Yeah. Amen. But I, I, I didn't want to hear that. There, there's things that 
the Lord has told me that I didn't want to hear. But it's imperative that we do. But if we keep rejecting that voice, when God begins to speak to our spirit and correct us, or just lead us in a way, if we don't do what He says, our heart becomes hard. And we're not able to hear that voice. And we, we might be needing to hear that voice when the, when the Spirit of God says, slow down because the bridge is out over the next horizon. We can't hear that because we said no so many times that our heart has become hard and we drive off the bridge. Amen. Because we weren't listening to God. How many times has God spoken to people don't get on that airplane? And they got on it anyway. And it crashed and everybody was killed. But you do hear testimonies from time to time when God would tell somebody, say, don't get on the airplane. And they say, I, not, I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to obey God. So they don't get on the airplane. And they end up living. I mean, listen, we can't harden our heart. And you'll, you'll harden your heart because when you take correction from God, when God begins to correct you, you begin to say, no, that's condemnation. I won't receive that. I, God loves me. God loves me just as I am. We sing that song, just as I am. I know He loves me just as I am. And I am an adulterer. I am a thief. I am a liar. See, that's, that's a bunch of hogwash. Amen. He, he, he loves you just as you are, but He loves you just so much that He's not going to leave you like you are. He's going to change you. Amen. And He will change you. And you say, well, I can't do that. Yes, you can. I, I know people that cussed every breath. They couldn't, they couldn't say a sentence without cussing. But you get them saved, man, that cleans up their mouth. Isn't that amazing? I mean, I've seen drunks get healed just like that. Delivered, not healed, but set free from that. Amen. And they didn't have to go to AA and say, I'm an alcoholic. Because they could go and say, I used to be an alcoholic, but now I'm born again. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Hey, praise God. Amen. So they can say that. So what that, that convicting power of God will, will change our life. And if we'll listen to Him, then He'll make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So that's, I started out this message about how God wants you to prosper and be in health. He does. But these are some hindrances why people are not prospering and why they're not in health is because they continue to say no to the Spirit. They fail to yield to the chastisement of the Lord. They fail to yield to the correction of God. Amen. We're not going to do that, are we? We're not going to yield. We're not going to yield to it. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Proverbs 17 and 10, a reproof enters more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. Amen. So the Bible says a reproof, well, all it takes is one reproof to change a wise man, but a hundred stripes won't, won't change a fool. So we're not a fool, are we? You know what a fool is according to the Word of God? Matthew chapter 7. Uh, a fool is somebody that hears the Word of God and doesn't act on it. You know the Word of God, you hear the Word of God, but you refuse to do what the Word of God says do. The Bible classifies you as a fool. And it says right here, a hundred stripes. It wouldn't do you any good anyway. Amen. So a lot of people think, well, God will whip you with those hundred stripes, you know, get you to change. The Bible says it ain't going to change a fool. Amen. So what will change? The correction of the Lord. We listen to that, and He'll change us if we'll allow Him to. Praise God. I've been to church so many times as a lost person before I got saved. So many times. And I tried to justify my sin, justify what I was doing, but you know, I could never come up with any justification. I'd always have to say guilty. You know, uh, there in second, or 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Bible talks about, you know, where, that's the scripture we use for communion. And it says, For this cause... Um, many are sick and weak uh, and some die prematurely. Why? Because they don't judge themselves and they don't, they don't judge the word, they don't judge the uh, they don't judge themselves or uh, 
they don't receive from God. Amen. They don't accept, they don't judge what God has done through Jesus. And the, the, and the Bible says, and for that, and they, they're talking about people taking communion. See, they, they think they're all right. They think they're all right. But all we have to do to change is say, Lord, I repent. I repent. Thank God for the blood of the Lamb. Because when I drink it, I, I know I, I'm holy, I'm righteous. Amen. And if I'm not, I'm going to get that way real quick. Amen. You can change just like that. Hallelujah. For this cause, many are weak, many are sick, many die prematurely. Oh, hallelujah. God is good, isn't He? So, amen. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. When I got saved, and I hope and pray that there's people like that here today, if there's anybody here today lost, I believe you're going to be saved. But I'm talking about a no-so salvation. I'm tired of people walking the aisle, telling us they're saved, and go right back out into the world. Nothing changes in their life. They continue to, they continue to commit adultery. They continue to live a riotous life, cheat, steal, lie. Continue to live that kind of life. We ought to be different. Come out from among them and be different. Amen. So I love you guys. And because I do love you, that's why I'm telling you this today. I love John Colley. That's why I had, to, I had to approach him like I did. But what did he say? Mercy, Papa. Mercy. Amen. So if God's whipping you today, Brother John's not doing it. God's the one that's correcting you. And if there's anybody like that today, do just like John Collin did. Mercy, Papa. Mercy. Amen. And He'll forgive you. Here, a four-year-old kid has got more understanding of the mercy of God than grown adults. Heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every man, woman, boy, and girl in this place. Lord, I lift them before you. And I pray that they're all saved. They're all born again. But Father, per adventure, there may be someone here today that's lost. And if they died today, they'd go to hell. Father, I love them too much to let them go to hell. And I know you love them as well, Father, more than even I do. And Lord, you've made a way for them to escape hell and make heaven their home. Lord, I pray, Father, talk to us each and all. Speak to us in our heart. Let us know, Lord, where we stand with you today. If we died today, would we go to heaven? If we died today, would we go to hell? Father, we want to know that answer. No matter how painful that might be to us. Because, Lord, we know that that is subject to change. Thank you, Father. Now, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed and no one looking, everyone in an attitude of prayer, if you're here this morning and you'd say, Pastor, that's me you're talking to. I'm lost. Or you might be what the church calls backslidden. I'm backslidden. All I know is one thing that I do know is I'm out of the will of God. And I need to get things right with God. Pastor, would you pray for me? Now listen, I'm going to do something different this morning. If that's you, and you'd say, yes, that's me. I'm, I'm lost, I'm backslidden, I'm out of the will of God. If that's you while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, would you stand up on your feet? Anybody here that's lost or backslidden, stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I feel this way, I feel this way from time to time. You know, people will hide their Christianity and they're, they're leaving room to go back out and sin. But when you take a stand for God, you're letting the devil and everybody else know, I'm not ashamed to be called a Christian. I'm not ashamed to stand up for God. I'm going to serve God for the rest of my life. If that's you, one more time. 
If God's dealing with your heart this morning, stand up right on your feet right now. Anybody? Hallelujah. All right. Then I take it that you're all Christians. If you're all born again, then we need to start living like it, don't we? Let's live like we're Christians. Well, let people, when they see us, let them know they can trust us. We're people of our word. We're, we're honest people. People of integrity. People that love God and love men. Amen. Let, let people know. Hallelujah. And if you mess up, repent. If you drop the ball, pick it up again. Repent. And just let God know how sorry you are. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Oh, hallelujah. Well, glory to God. And I believe there's something else that you need. You need the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. If you're here this morning and you've never been, you're born again, but you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about in water. Baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. If that's you, you stand up on your feet. And I'll pray with you. Anybody this morning. Hallelujah. Then I take it that you're all born again. You're all baptized in the Holy Ghost. You speak with other tongues. Hallelujah. Then you're a holy roller. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is so good, isn't He? Turn to your neighbor and say, I sure love my pastor. you got to love me. Amen. you you got to. You've been commanded to love me. You might not like me, but you've got to love me. <laughs> Amen. But I love you, and that's the reason we have, to, we have to teach on this. It's because we don't want you to go to hell. We don't want something worse coming upon you. We want you living a good life. Amen. The high life. Hallelujah. And it's not Miller beer, is it? Amen. We live in the high life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, everybody bless. I'm going to ask my prayer team to come at this time. If you're on my prayer team, you can go ahead and come. If you need prayer about anything this morning, something we didn't, you might need to be healed in your body. Well, now's the time to do it, even though I didn't preach on healing that much. That, that's part of the promises, amen. amen? Praise the Lord. And so if you're here this morning, you need, you need prayer about something, maybe your marriage, a job situation. Amen. You, you, you might need uh, prayer about somebody you know, your neighbor, whatever. Come let us pray with you. When I dismiss everyone in just a moment, uh, me and my prayer team will be up here. You come and let us pray with you. We'll stay as long as we need to. Praise the Lord. But I believe God's got something good for you today. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Now next Sunday, amen. What's next Sunday? Palm Sunday, isn't it? That's the Sunday before the resurrection day. Amen. I was in Honduras one time preaching and and the uh, most beautiful sight, we were there in the, in the city on Palm Sunday, and these, these uh, women were all dressed in white, and they would come. They came and laid palm leaves down, and they were reenacting that, uh, that scene where Jesus rode into... Huh? Oh, the Palm Sunday's not next. Sunday after next, amen. We'll come next Sunday anyway. <laughs> amen. We, we're going to have a good time. Amen. So, uh, but anyway, come expect it. Come expecting a miracle. Maybe not for you, but for somebody else. Ask God to, 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 to show up and show out. And bring somebody with you. Amen. All right. Don't forget the invitation cookies. Get, get a couple of those cookies. Take them home with you. Give them to your neighbor. Give them to a friend. As you go to the restaurant today, give them to the, give them to the waitress. Don't eat them. Give them away, okay? All right. They're out there. And the Swamp John tickets are on sale. Or you can... Buy Swamp John at the door on Tuesday. Amen. We'll see you Tuesday. Don't forget it. Amen. All right, everybody. Blessed? Then you're dismissed. Go rejoicing. We'll see you Tuesday.